powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. A very good Wednesday afternoon. We are midway through the week. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Noon News. I'm Samantha Harrelson. The Missoula County Fire Protection Association has announced fire danger in Missoula County is being hiked to extreme. Fire officials also report stage two fire restrictions will be going into effect in West Central Montana on Friday. The implementation of stage two fire restrictions means no campfires, no use of combustion engines off roads or in the woods between 1 p.m. and 1 a.m., and no smoking allowed except for in designated areas. There were 35 different fire restrictions across the state of Montana as of mid-morning on Wednesday. That includes the eastern part of the state. Yellowstone County commissioners voted to enact stage one fire restrictions. Those go into effect on Friday. And of course, contributing to that fire danger is the hot weather, and it's just going to keep getting hotter, isn't it? That's right. Each day it's been nudging up, Sammy, and we're going to continue to watch that. Tomorrow, we're going to start to watch for the possibility of quite a few record high temperatures across the region, or at least we're going to be in the neighborhood from Great Falls, Haver, Cutbank, Townsend, just uh, likely very close to your record high for tomorrow. Same thing also true not only along the High Line and northern portion of the state, but also Dillon could be close to a record high by the end of the day and also looking into areas west of the divide missoula and glacier international airport north of uh, kalispell area looking at some very hot temperatures by later in the afternoon we'll take a look at that warm up and what's beyond it with the forecast coming up thanks ed in other news missoula county sheriff officials say a man who was reported missing monday in the sealy lake area has been found alive Missoula County Sheriff's deputies, Sealy Swan Search and Rescue, BLM, Two Bear Air, and the Forest Service have been searching for the missing man since Monday. The man's motorcycle was found in the Nine Mile Prairie area and it was out of gas. Searchers did locate a campsite they believe was his last known location. Sheriff officials say the man survived the ordeal with no injuries. And meanwhile, a 68-year-old California man was airlifted from the Bob Marshall Wilderness on Tuesday after he was separated from his outfitting group. Lewis and Clark County Sheriff Leo Dutton says the man left the outfitter camp around noon on Sunday with a backpack and a few supplies. He was reported missing around 1030 Monday morning after he did not return to camp. A four-man search and rescue team, including assistance from helicopters and the Montana backcountry horsemen, located the man on Tuesday morning. He had suffered a broken leg while exploring an area about a mile off the trail. Rescuers were able to move him to a horse and take him back to the ranger station. The man was then airlifted out and taken to a Great Falls hospital. Kalispell police have released more information about a fatal stabbing over the weekend. We now know the two involved were dating and living together. 34-year-old Ryan Lamb is being held in the Flathead County Jail on pending deliberate homicide charges in the death of 31-year-old Ryan Nixon. Deputies found Nixon unresponsive early Sunday morning inside of an apartment following a disturbance call. He was pronounced dead at the scene. No motive has been released, but authorities can confirm the two men were in a domestic partnership. The incident is still under investigation. The name of the woman killed in an early morning crash in Wyola on Tuesday has been released. 52-year-old Hasinta Walks of Lodgegrass died when she on a pickup truck she was in, failed to yield while getting on the highway and was hit by a logging truck. The Montana Highway Patrol says the crash happened on Secondary Highway 550, 451, just outside of Wyola. Walks died on scene. Her husband was transported to the hospital with unknown injuries. That crash is still under investigation. In other news, east of Livingston, the search continues for the 15-year-old Bozeman boy who's been missing since his family's drift boat capsized on the Yellowstone River a week and a half ago. Searchers are now focusing about two miles upstream from the accident site. Led by the Park County Sheriff's Office, 18 agencies have assisted in the recovery efforts. Sergeant Brad Bilcher says water levels have dropped significantly, which has been helpful. While they don't believe James Anderson will be found alive, they're hopeful for the next best outcome. The recovery aspect of it is, is, is us doing everything that we can possibly do to provide some closure for the family. Online fundraising efforts have brought in around $17,000 to help the family during this time. 
In other news today, Montana's economic growth in 2018 is focused on a strong Bozeman and Missoula market, with Yellowstone County and the eastern third of the state stagnant. The University of Montana Bureau of Business and Economic Research presented its annual report to the Billings business community on Tuesday. It's not doom and gloom for Yellowstone County, but several factors are keeping growth at a slow pace. Yellowstone County uh, serves a forested area, and when you look at the geography, uh, being served uh, in the energy patch, the ag centers, even the transportation industries have uh, cooled off quite a bit relative to where things were a few years ago. Gallatin County is the strongest region for job growth in the past year, adding almost 2,500 jobs in 2017. Both Flathead County and Missoula County added over 1,000 jobs. By contrast, the state's largest county added less than 500 jobs, and the outlook shows slow growth in Yellowstone County so far this year. Payroll wages are following suit. Wages in Gallatin County are up over 5 percent, while Yellowstone County actually saw a dip in wages over the past year. The labor market remains tight in Montana. There are not enough employees to fill job openings. Meanwhile, the first cases of equine West Nile have been confirmed in Montana. The cases were reported in Muscle Shell in Lake Counties. The same mosquitoes that transmit West Nile to horses can transmit the disease to humans. Tilling through any puddles of stagnant water, changing and cleaning water troughs, and vaccinating your livestock are all great ways to help protect you and your herd. Signs and symptoms of equine West Nile include muscle tremors throughout the body, muscle weakness, or a lack of balance in the hind end. And in north central Montana, state and federal officials are attempting to trap a wounded grizzly bear that was shot on July 26th. The bear is believed to be along the river east of Interstate 15. When the grizzly was trapped, it will be taken to a veterinarian to determine the extent of its injuries. The shooting incident is currently under investigation by Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And before we take a break today, candidates in Montana's U.S. Senate and House races have agreed to live debates this fall on the Montana Television Network. MTN will be partnering with Yellowstone Public Radio on the debates, which will air in late September and early October. The first debate is scheduled September 29th among the candidates for U.S. House. Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte is being challenged by Democrat Kathleen Williams and Libertarian Eleanor Swanson. The Senate debate will be October 6th with Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester, Republican challenger Matt Rosendale, and Libertarian Rick Breckenridge. The candidates will field questions from a panel of MTN and Yellowstone Public Radio journalists. Those debates will be broadcast live. Well, thanks so much for joining us here on the new news. Well, it sounds like something out of a movie. Firefighters across the pond capture a rare fire NATO. That story coming up. But first, Ed has a full look at the forecast as the things start to heat up around the state. We'll be right back. You're watching MTN News with Samantha Harrelson. Storm Trekker Weather with Ed McIntosh and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.